I'm the Chief Data Commercialization Officer for the bank. So, so what I want to do is I want to basically talk about three different sections. The first section is what my job entails. The second section is basically components and capabilities that the bank has. And the third section is basically how we commercialize across social media channels and what we're planning on doing there and what we are doing there. Okay. So the first thing is, what is the Chief Data Commercialization Officer? Okay. Well, what it is is basically banks sit on a kind of very enriched data platform because we see all your transactions, we see all your swipes, we kind of know your behavior, whether you're going to Tasha's, whether you're coming to Emperor's Casino, where you fill in petrol. So we sit on an abundance of data. Okay? So my job is to take that abundance of data and try and use it and commercialize it for different activities. Okay? And in that component, I kind of have underneath my portfolio, and I feel very fortunate, is all the robotics, the um, automization, in other words, how we automate and actually how we actually take tasks away from people which are mundane, um, including the physical robots, so the physical robots and the AI robots, which to me are more interfaces, different interfaces that customers use. Um, intelligent marketing, and we'll cover that one a bit in the presentation if it flicks up. So intelligent marketing is basically using the data across our digital platforms, our physical platforms, and our social media platforms. Okay. Um, then, then um, finance. So, so there's a whole load of finance around business cases, projects that sit into my portfolio. Um, and then a lot of stuff around data analytics, AI, machine learning. Okay, so those are kind of the, co the components I run. Okay, so that's kind of me. What we've done is we've basically taken all those components and what we're trying to do is we're trying to commercialize it so we make money from either our clients or our merchants, et cetera, et cetera. And a couple of things is um, machine learning. I have a very cool slide that explains machine learning, but it's, it's not on the screen. So, so, so basically, the slide, if you can imagine this, it's blueberry muffins and chihuahua dog. So, so, so the easiest way of explaining it is millions of those on one screen. So when we talk about machine learning or deep learning, a lot of it is the mathematical algorithms that are able to identify the difference between a chihuahua dog and a blue muffin. Okay? If you can see the slide, it would make a lot more sense. Okay? And what machines do is they learn. Okay? So the more data you throw at it, the more it will learn Okay, how to identify between the blue muffin and the chihuahua dog. Okay? And then, if you really want to throw algorithms at it, it would even identify the chihuahua dog and the age of the chihuahua dog and the, the weight of the chihuahua dog and the height of the chihuahua dog. It just learns and learns and learns and learns and it optimizes those algorithms. Okay? So what's happening um, across the banking industry is, and I have another slide, but, uh, not on that thing, is I have, I have a thing called whale sharks and piranhas, okay? So, so what does that mean? Basically in banking, um, the banking revenue across NII, NRR, which is the revenue we make, okay, it's about 180 million rand across, 180 billion rand across the market in South Africa, okay? What's happening to that? You guys are demanding more and pushing pricing down, okay? So you want more, uh, you want more for less, basically, okay? What's also happening is we have banks like Discovery, um, Africa Bank has kind of revitalized, there's Old Mutual Bank. Those are kind of the sharks coming in. They either reimagine banks or they have new banks coming into that 180 billion rand pie. Okay? Now, fintechs to me are not really banks and they're not really whales, and I want to cover whales left. What they are is they kind of come into payment streams or they come into banking activities, and if we were making 100 rand from that activity, we're now only making 50 or 60 rand. So a good example would be a payment stream where we make about 100 rand, you'll find somebody would come and do pause devices and then we'd have to pay away some of the money to that pause device. So what they're doing is they're kind of eating up little pieces. Generally when I look at fintechs, they don't want to be banks and I'll tell you why. Um, the settlement and clearing is really hard and really complicated. Banks clear with each other every single day. day. In other words, we lend money to ABSA, ABSA lends money to us, the regulator wants reports. So that settlement and clearing is highly complex and the regulatory reporting is highly complex, and then you've got a whole lot of things for regulatory reporting which goes with banking licenses, which is expensive. So when fintechs come into the universe, that whole banking sphere is still a little bit uncompetitive because you need a lot of money, and then you need a lot of know-how around settlement and clearing, and also the regulatory reporting can cost, in their bank it costs 
billions, actually, than to just, just making sure that the regulator, and there's new acts that come in from AML and FICA. So, so they come into, so the piranhas come in here, and they eat little pieces away. And what are the whales? Okay. Now, the whales are really important to me, because the whales to me are people like Facebook, and people like Apple, and people like Amazon. Okay. What happens with a whale is it comes into, so imagine the sea, it comes into an ecosystem, so we have a thing called South Africa banking ecosystem, and it works like this, and everybody plays roughly with the same rules. Not, not exactly. Okay. What happens with a whale is when they come in, they disrupt. And when they disrupt, they kind of destroy that ecosystem and they actually make a new ecosystem that does same, the kind of same thing for the clients. Okay? Um, I don't think we're going to win on the person. We're not going to win, are we? Okay, so, so I'm just going <laughs> to carry on speaking. Okay? And what happens is, you know, Google, Amazon, Facebook, they have some competitive advantage because a lot of the social media channels are run by them. Google do a lot of activity um, around where you go, what you do, what you're searching for, and they kind of store all that data. So when I kind of look at banking and from a net bank point of view, who are my real competitors? Okay? Facebook, Google, Amazon, okay, they spend a lot of money on data scientists, on data, on managing that digital landscape and actually competing with each other. Okay? So when I look from a NetBank point of view, I'm kind of looking three, four years out to say a whale will come into South Africa banking sooner or later. And when they come into South Africa banking, it's going to be disruptive in a different kind of way. Not like a fintech way, not like a new shark bank coming in. It will be completely different. And they come in with a lot of cash, a lot of know-how, um, a lot of customer interfacing, and also owning a lot of their social media channels. Okay. So now going on to social media and what NetBank is doing. Um, I have a video called Adam and Eve. So in NetBank, we have a thing called Adam and Eve where we kind of blend the competencies together. What do we blend into that? So if you saw the video, Adam would be the guy basically walking around. He has um, um, predicted what the next products would be or what the next conversations would be to the client. Okay. And basically, he's saying, I predicted that this person would take a savings account, we need to talk to him about his FICA, or he hasn't downloaded the app. So when I talk about um, products, I don't talk about next best product, next best action, okay? next best conversation. Those are kind of the words which everybody talks about. It's actually next best moment. Where can NetBank, on what interface, on what social media channel or physical channel, because to me, channels are channels, you just have to be at the attention of where the customer's at. Okay? Where can we insert ourselves that add value to you guys? Okay? In a meaningful way that you will be happy with what we're doing. So, just to be honest, as transparent as possible. So, so the context of Adam is to push activity to clients where it's something of value. And probably every sixth or seventh one in, we may slide a sale. Okay? What does that mean? It means that you get trust because we're telling you, hey, you know what, you don't have enough money in your account. In two days' time, you've got a big debit order off. Coming off, you're not going to have enough money. That's value to you. Or actually, you know, peer grouping, okay? You're spending more money than your peer group, and this is what your peer group spend money on, okay? So these are kind of nice little values, and we kind of tweak to the client depending on what he wants, okay? So those are the kind of things that Adam does. But with Adam, it's very machine learning, very data scientists, it's push, okay? So... Like every good man, he needs a woman. Okay. What is Eve? E Eve would be, how do we push down an appropriate channel in a visual way that is appealing to you as well? Because if I just go to you and I go, hey, I'm pushing a savings account. No context, no nothing else. Model's good. You might need a savings account. But you're busy in the day and stuff like that at the same time. It doesn't appeal to you. It's on the wrong medium. It's a problem. So, so what Eve is, is Eve is that in the moment... And in the moment's very important. So one of the capabilities we need is we need lots of images. Okay? Images appropriate and personalized to you. So the moment inside the AI Spice of Deep Learning Space, what you can actually do is you can take a picture and convert it into data. So I could go into your Facebook account if the privacy indicators are there, see where you're partying, see what you're doing, and basically add that to and augment that to my data as like hobbies and interests. So the more I can build on the customer, be it picture, be it video, be it actual data we know, okay, the better understanding I get about you. Okay? And then likewise, what you can do today, and it's still, you don't get the picture quality, but it is coming very quick, is you can actually take the data. Um, I like wine, I like restaurants, I like mountain biking, I like holidays. You can actually merge a picture together. So what you can actually do is take the data attributes, 
You can take all those attributes and you can actually create a, a personalized picture specifically for Simon. So when I'm looking through my Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, whatever it may be, okay, and I see all these random pictures, this one's going to appeal to me, or should appeal to me, because it feels like me. Okay? So that's grabbing the attention. Okay? So if I'm grabbing the attention and I've got the client's attention, the next step is how do I quickly fulfill? With machine learning, the feedback loop again, and that feedback loop again, okay, it's really, really important to get the feedback loop so the machine understands that picture wasn't appropriate, wasn't correct, or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So where are we going with social media? Does, does everybody understand two of the big things which are going to be happening in the next few years? Okay, so, 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 so there's a random question. Okay, so another slide. Google Home, Amazon, uh, Echo, um, and uh, Apple HomePod. Okay, what's happening is voice is becoming a new thing which is actually disrupted to the internet and to the social channel. Because I'm going to be ordering pizzas, I'm going to be speaking to my Google, it's going to be getting all that information, and before you know it, it will be selecting debonairs and it will be selecting that for you. Okay? Google holds a lot of that IP. So one of those big disruptive things is the voice. How do I insert the social media marketing activity into the voice? Okay? How do I get consistency across that channel, across Facebook, across Instagram? How do I use Instagram lookalike? How do I find a person in Instagram okay, who potentially has lots of followers or a person in Twitter who's got lots of followers, and how do I utilize him to push out the NetBank product? Okay? With him, images, et cetera, et cetera. So all these kind of things are happening at the moment. And then who's heard of TikTok? Hands? Okay. TikTok is, is also coming in, and TikTok is mainly, I always call it like children's stupid videos and stuff like that, but it's getting a lot of traction. One Chinese person has about 17 million followers, 17 million views. Ah, okay, so we'll cover that. Okay, so this is the, the sharks, whales, and um, piranhas. So I've covered that. Okay, we're going backwards here. Um, what's important on this slide is the Darth Vader, which would be the chartered accountants who also wanted a cost. <laughs> okay, so it's really important. My boss is called Dave. Okay, and he knows that does this. Okay, all he cares about is cost. He says the marketing people, you know, the digital people, they just tell me, spend, 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 do these projects, and I never see a return. Okay? So the chartered accountants, as that thing is getting tighter, are becoming a louder voice. Um, this is kind of my data slide, the Chihuahua slide, machine learning, remember we spoke about this. Okay? So basically, after a couple of runs and using GPUs, basically the machine is predicting at 98%. So you keep giving it more, it's going to get to 100%. Everybody understands which is the blue muffin and Chihuahua? <laughs> okay? Um, these are the social media channels, but I suppose what I need to do, customer journey mapping important, so whatever I talk about, whether it's leads management or something, it's going to mature to a customer journey. Okay, when I say customer journey, being there for the customer, all those points, and then sales, service, it just becomes part of a journey. Um, lots of tech that you need to bring together in the marketing space. Um, oh, that didn't work. So I'm not going to get the video. The video was in between there, but I don't have time for the video. Um, this is kind of evil, what we're doing with Eve. Um, what's really important, and I know is social media and stuff, if you're pushing out something, you need to be consistent across the channels with your pictures. So, the Facebook's 800 by 800, you know, you're pushing kind of a script to a bank or something else. So, when everybody talks about this, they always want to know social media channels, digital channels, physical channels. You have to be consistent across all of them. And what you should be doing is pushing those conversations across all of them in different formats. So at a banker level is probably a script, in Snapchat is probably a picture, in Facebook is probably a picture, in Instagram is probably a picture, and a little bit of words, etc. Et um, very important as well, the Dave thing, the Darth Vader and the Charles Accountant. Whatever you're doing inside the marketing space, it's really, really important to do the content, but make the content, if you're going to do videos and stuff, reusable. So Gary Vaynerchuk, who is a big guy on social media, okay, pushes marketing, he has a thing called pillar content. Pillar content is really important because it allows you to keep pushing the content across the channels in different formats. Okay? Very, very important because things are speeding up. And when things are speeding up, what it means is it means that Adam and Eve are running every single day. Okay? None of this people come to us anymore. None of this once a month, once a week. It's got to be, and that's what the next best moment is. It means that you've taken all that capability and competency 
and you made it daily. Um, important slide, so, so Visa with physical channels, that's netbank.coza, netbank.coza needs to be the home page or the app. What you need to do is cross all these social media channels and the content that you put out, you need to push back into one of these home branches. Preferably the digital channel, the digital, as I say, about the web, and make the web the home. Okay? So everything from that web page should be able to go out to the social media and social media back. I spoke about this, so not to, and TikTok being big, and I think that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because, because what actually happens is, um, depending on the photo quality, you've got millions and millions of pixels in there. So eventually it's actually reading the pixels. And remember what happens with machine learning is you'd show it chihuahuas eating blue muffins, but you'd have to show it many, 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 many photos. It's the same as as soon as you move out of a chihuahua v blue muffin into a chihuahua, how big is it, what is its size? It starts condensing that. So all this is, is clever math, okay? But clever math needs to optimize its algorithm, okay? And when it's optimizing its algorithm and you give it back the answer, eventually it finds that sweet spot. I like questions, by the way. It's a lot easier when <laughs> we doing all the presentation. Do. We all do. do. Do you have a question? Or were you just scratching your head? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay, thank you very much okay. indeed. And thank you in particular for reminding us that you've got to be consistent yeah. across your different uh, channels. And I think that's something that w we often forget. Um, uh, partly because it's different people dealing with different channels. Well, 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 people's also problem. expectations. So, so if you're getting a really, really good digital experience, why would you get a poor branch experience or a poor ATM experience? Yeah. It connects back into the brand again. So the brand stands for quality It's like Apple. One of the things I like about Apple is the boxes are cool. So instantly, when I get an Apple product, my first experience of it's an iPad or iPhone or whether they're going to install, the box looks good. Okay? And it's consistently good across all their devices. So a bank's not the same thing. It's a digital channel, it needs to be personalized, okay, it needs to have that one-to-one -one so you feel like it's just me talking to you, but really it's a machine talking to you, and it's just learning from you and learning your little um, bits and pieces here and there. Okay, it's really important to get consistency on the experience, consistency on the content, okay, and make sure that the customer expects it every single time. Yeah, absolutely. Cool.